Blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power and might be to the creator of all, the most high heavenly father. All glory and praise to the most holy name of the almighty creator of this universe. Amen. Beloved, in the book of wisdom we read in chapter 1 verse 5, it's written, For a holy and disciplined spirit will flee from deceit and will leave foolish thoughts behind and will be ashamed at the approach of unrighteousness. For a holy and disciplined spirit will flee from deceit. This is a warning that holy wisdom is giving us. Beloved, in the previous segment, we examined the third secret of Fatima, which the Holy Mother had given in the year 1970. That secret is not what people have presumed it to be. We saw that in reality, the third secret is not what the church has officially published as the third secret of Fatima. So, what is the third secret of Fatima? What is the Holy Mother's mission? She is the ambassador of all the salvific deeds that God fulfills through His Son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Mother is instrumental in preparing God's children to receive all that God has promised His children. She is responsible for the completion of God's plans for His children. She stands by God's children, works for their good and leads them into victory. She renews them and makes them the true children of God. This work of the spirit of wisdom is seen in the lives of all righteous people, from Adam to the prophets like Moses and the apostles. We can see very clearly how holy wisdom has guided and led them in their lives. A holy mother is the one who has come into our midst with messages from heaven. We have read and seen that in the last century, a holy mother has appeared with messages from God in many places. And they were given to the people and the children who were chosen by God. Beloved, our Lord's second coming is close at hand. Prophecies and visions are going to be fulfilled. It is time for God's children to receive the most beautiful salvation that God has prepared for His children. God's wrath is imminent. It is with the knowledge of these events that our Holy Mother has given three great warnings called the three secrets of Fatima. Just like in Fatima, God had chosen certain people and in many instances, little children in several other places to deliver these messages to us through our Holy Mother. However, those in authority, the priest and the church officials were unable to accept and receive with the required seriousness these chosen ones or their messages which were given by a Holy Mother. The same happened with the third secret of Fatima. Though Sister Lucy wrote these messages and submitted it to the then Bishop of Lyria in 1944, Pope John XXIII of that time read the message only in 1959 because the Holy Virgin Mary had ordered it to be published in 1960. According to the instructions of our Holy Mother, Sister Lucy said that only then would the message become clear. But Pope John XXIII, who read it in 1959, did not publish it, and for decades it remained hidden. At that time, there were a lot of people who prayed and waited eagerly for the third secret of Fatima to be published. In the year 2000, 
The church published a document as the third secret of Fatima, where Cardinal Ratzinger said that no great mystery is revealed. Cardinal Ratzinger said the veil of the future is not torn. In this way, the message was dismissed. Cardinal Sodano said that the third secret talked about the persecutions that the Christians had to endure in the earlier 20th century and the attempted assassination on Pope John Paul in 1981. However, beloved, we saw in the last segment that through the third secret of Fatima, the Holy Mother has not tried to warn us about trials and tribulations and save us from it. It is not God who gives us warnings about trials and tribulations that are in accordance with His will, nor try to prevent us from undergoing it. It is Satan who does that. This is clearly seen when Jesus himself rebuked Peter by calling him Satan when he disapproved of the sufferings that Jesus was to undergo on the cross. So, it is evident that the Holy Mother was not talking about his sufferings on the cross or the trials and tribulation that the Christian church had to face in the third secret of Fatima. One thing is clear about these warnings, especially the warnings given by God. We have seen that God usually gives us warning just before His wrath, revenge and punishments befall the world. God will definitely give warnings about these. This is clear from the warnings that were given during the times of Noah and Lot which are a lesson for all of us. So God will give us warnings at the right time. And we have already seen through whom he has given these warnings. Therefore, beloved, a warning is given to rescue us from a great tragedy of punishment that is about to befall us. It is given to prevent the tragedy prophesied and to let us take steps to avoid it. The Holy Mother's warnings are not about the persecutions that Christians have to undergo, as it is not God's wish to run away and hide from it. So, a warning is given so that we do not get trapped and perish in the events predicted. When Sister Lucy was asked about the third secret, she clearly said that it is mentioned in the Gospels and the book of Revelation. So here, it is clear that the Holy Mother herself has given these messages because she always speaks on the basis of God's word. The warnings are about Satan's treachery or about the atrocities that he is going to commit about a heinous deed that Satan is going to inflict upon believers. The warnings are given so that we do not get trapped in his cunning plans and perish. In other words, the third secret of Fatima might be a warning about a great tragedy which will lead to the church's downfall and destruction. It is a very serious matter requiring our immediate attention. And hence, it is important to examine what exactly does the message contain. Dearly beloved, what is the greatest wealth that God gave the apostles, the first Christians? It is nothing other than faith. True faith is irreplaceable because just like God is irreplaceable, faith is also irreplaceable. Faith is deep and eternal, just like God the Almighty. Through faith, God's children enjoy the fruits of all salvific plans that God has prepared for them. We receive everything from God only through faith. As we read in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. 
It is a gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Beloved, this applies not only to the first fruits of salvation that Jesus Christ gave us in his first coming, but also to the fullness of salvation that we are going to receive in His second coming. Today, many Bible scholars and church authorities teach that faith is not necessary to attain salvation. It is enough if you live a good life and do good. These are the teachings of this world. But to receive the salvation that is given by God, you need faith and not just good deeds. Now, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't do good deeds. Faith should accompany our good deeds. Our deeds should be based on faith. And our faith should be the foundation of everything. We will be deemed righteous based on that faith. And through faith, grace flows to us. We are saved and are going to attain the fullness of salvation only through this grace. So we are saved through the grace of faith. If it was not like that, then Jesus Christ didn't have to come to this earth to suffer hardships and to be crucified. Because it is through our faith in Jesus Christ's sufferings and his death on the cross that we receive the forgiveness of our sins. It is not on account of our deeds that we receive the gift of redemption. Eternal life is also like that. So, the teaching that good deeds are enough and faith is not necessary for salvation is not divine. It is satanic. It makes faith irrelevant. It is through faith that we fight against Satan. Faith acts as a shield against the arrows of Satan. So he tries everything possible to destroy our faith. Beloved, faith is the greatest wealth that God has given his children. Faith in God means keeping faith not only in God, but in everyone who comes from God. Faith in God, faith in His Son, faith in Holy Spirit, faith in His daughter, that is in Holy Wisdom. If any of these are dismissed, then that faith is incomplete, distorted and not salvific. Faith in God means Faith in God, faith in His words, in His deeds, and in those sent by Him. If any of these is lacking, then that faith is incomplete, and you cannot be saved by that faith. So, we have been saved and are going to attain the fullness of salvation only through the grace of faith. Dear brothers and sisters, here we are not doing a detailed examination of relevance of faith because it is a very vast topic. You must have heard a lot of things about faith. Many things are written in the Bible about faith. If a person reads these Bible verses carefully, he can understand and receive it. Let's read from Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved. But the one who does not believe will be condemned. This was only the first fruit of salvation that the Son of God gave us when He came to this earth 2,000 years ago. However, this also applies to the salvation that we are to receive in the second coming. So, if we are to receive the fullness of salvation from the Son of God, then we need to have faith. Faith in what? Faith in this gospel which will be proclaimed in the end times. The Bible testifies of a gospel like this being proclaimed in the end times. From the year 2005, 
This gospel has been proclaimed through the prophet Isaiah sent by God, who the world knows as Joseph Punar, the prophet of the Almighty God. It is a proclamation about the second coming of the Son of God, the kingdom of God that is fast approaching, the year of God's grace, the fulfillment of God's plan and God's vengeance and wrath which will fall upon this world. We must believe in this good news. That is why the word of God teaches us that the time is fulfilled. Repent and believe in the good news. The time is fulfilled now in the end times, not 2,000 years ago. So, we have to believe in the good news that is proclaimed in the end times. And for that, we have to repent. We are saved through this faith. The one who believes will be saved. And the one who doesn't will be punished. Either here or there. There is no in-between here. Either salvation or punishment. So, what is faith? We read in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. God has given us many promises. Heavenly promises. The promise of eternal life. Of dwelling with God. Promise of heavenly things. It is not just an ordinary promise or dreams pertaining to worldly things. So, we have to examine today how many Christians truly have this hope. They have a lot of hopes, dreams and aspirations about life in this world. For that, they pray and perform religious acts. But how many hope for eternal life? They will have faith only if they have divine hopes. Because faith is the assurance that I will get what I hope for. This hope that I got is from believing in the unseen, which is from the word of God. So, the foundation of faith is the belief in the word of God. We should believe the word of God as it is unadulterated, undefiled, without it being hideously interpreted, without it being uselessly rendered to suit church traditions. We should believe in it just as it was handed over to us by God. It should be written and believed as the Holy Spirit of God intended it to be. Faith is the assurance that we will get what we hope for. And this faith is a great wealth that God has given us. How will we get this faith? We read in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So faith comes from what is heard. And what is heard comes to the word of Christ. Our faith comes when we hear what has been preached by the people who possess the Spirit of God, it will be about the Son of God, about the salvific plan that God has prepared through Him, and about the gift of eternal life. Thus, our faith comes from hearing. In other words, when God's words are preached to us by the Holy Spirit, the greatest gift that God gives us is the grace to believe it. God must give us the gift to discern and believe that the word of God is the absolute truth. Faith is a gift from God. It is not achieved through your or my efforts. Even if you do research your whole life or get PhD degrees or memorize every verse in the Bible. It is not necessary that you have faith. God has to give it to us as a gift. The greatest wealth that God has given us is faith. And the true gospel leading to that faith is the greatest wealth of God's people. 
So Satan will directly attack this wealth to destroy God's children or the church of God. If this faith is lost, then the purpose of establishing a church is lost. Never again will it be able to bear good fruit. It will be a wild grape wine bearing wild fruits. Its members will be led to eternal condemnation if they lose this faith. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, if you lose a true faith, then a false faith which bears similarities to the real one will come up in its place. It is only a duplicate which imitates the original and not the original itself. Jesus has taught us clearly that if we lose the faith which is given by God, it will be replaced by false or satanic teachings. As we read in Luke chapter 11, verse 24 to 26. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it wanders through waterless regions looking for a resting place, but not finding any. It says, I will return to my house from which I came. When it comes, it finds it swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they enter and live there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. Beloved, this warning of God has already been fulfilled. God has prophesied that after this occurs, true faith will be replaced by a false faith. And through that, the Bible verses which prophesy to this will be rejected and twisted. And through it, the descendants of Satan will conquer and rule this entire divine constitution, making it his own. This is a very serious matter which should be observed with great care. As we read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the lawless one is revealed, the one destined for destruction. He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, declaring himself to be God. There isn't a greater tragedy than this. Beloved, what is the Holy Spirit testifying here? Before that day comes, there will be a renunciation of faith. That is the apostasy. Beloved, what is apostasy? We have looked at this topic in our earlier episode. There are many people who have rejected their Christian faith in God the Father, Jesus Christ, and in the true word of God. This is not the renunciation that we are talking about because this will happen in the end times, just before the day of the Lord. In other words, it will occur in that generation which will be existing when the day of the Lord is at hand. Secondly, why is this renunciation of faith happening? What does the apostasy lead to? Whom is it preparing the way for? It is preparing the way for the descendants of the evil one, the lawless man, the man destined for destruction, the man called the Antichrist. This apostasy is paving the way for him to take his seat in the temple of God. Here we are talking about that renunciation of faith which starts from where the Antichrist establishes his rule. We have seen that faith comes from hearing, hearing the preaching about Jesus Christ. In other words, from the Gospels. So, it is very easy to find out what this apostasy is. 
It is the renunciation of faith by the ones to whom Jesus Christ had entrusted the wealth of faith till he comes back to collect his flock. In short, the ones who were responsible for guarding and spreading the gospel, containing the wealth of faith, the ones who were responsible for guarding the foundational faith of the church, in the end times, their successors will abandon this faith and the true gospel leading to that faith. This is the apostasy mentioned in the Bible. Has this renunciation of faith already taken place? If you look at the enormous, enormous palaces, basilicas and high-tech system present and ask whether the renunciation of faith has already taken place here, then it will be very difficult to understand as the changes are not visible. To identify this, one must understand the basic truths of faith. You must examine whether the faith given by Jesus Christ has been guarded and maintained in the same way that he entrusted it to his apostles or has it been discarded. You should stand on God's side in loyalty towards your God and examine these matters whilst being guided by the Holy Spirit. But if one looks at these things from their own perspective or from a worldly viewpoint or from that of the churches of the world or the leaders of the church, they will not be able to understand this. Dearly beloved, the renunciation of faith is a diluting, modifying and dismissing of the basic fundamental truths of the Christian faith. Apostasy is when the renunciation of faith begins with the topmost individuals of the religious hierarchy and it has already taken place. The one true God, the creator of all has been forsaken when they say that God did not create us, that everything was created as a big bang theory, the truth that God is the creator has been rejected and thereby God himself has been discarded. Many who are not God have started calling themselves God. Thus, faith in the one true God has been discarded. The foundation of the Christian faith is that Jesus Christ is the only Savior and that salvation is only through Him. The only person who can give us eternal life is the Son of God and He is the only way through whom we can reach God. This is the foundation of Christianity. Yet, this has also been discarded. Thirdly, God has taught us that the word of God is the truth and everything contrary or opposite to that truth should be discarded as lies. Today, scholars have accepted a lot of things contrary to what is in the word of God as truth and have discarded the true word of God. So, if we examine things from God's perspective, we can see that apostasy has already taken place. It would be enough if at least the children of God recognize that. Beloved, all the basic truths of faith have been abandoned. Therefore, what has happened? Satan's arrows have all emerged victorious over them as per what we read in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So here, we do not have this shield and because this shield is lost, we have become victims of all types of satanic attacks. 
renunciation of faith is the greatest tragedy that can happen to the church. Beloved, this is clearly proclaimed by the Holy Mother in her messages to the priest Stefano Gobi in the book to the priest, Our Lady's Beloved Son. Message number 370. The Holy Mother gave the following warning. You should read, meditate, and understand the scriptures in the Holy Bible to understand the times that you are living in. I'm leading you all in a motherly way to make you understand the signs of a great tribulation. This great tragedy is written clearly in the Gospels, in the letters of the Apostles, and in the book of Revelation. These constant signs will become a reality in this age that you are living in. Firstly, a great apostasy is spreading in every part of the church to the lack of faith which is flooding even among its very pastors, that is priests. Satan has succeeded in spreading everywhere the great apostasy by means of his subtle work of seduction, which has brought many to be alienated from the truth of the gospel, to follow the fables of the new theological theories, and to take delight in evil and in sin sought after as an actual good. So, in these end times, the greatest sign which the Holy Mother highlights in the Gospels, the letters, and the book of Revelation is this renunciation of faith. And it has already taken place. Dear brothers and sisters, the word of God which clearly shows what this apostasy is, it is mentioned in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 and 4. We have seen that this forsaking of faith is the work of the spirit of Antichrist. The forsaking of faith takes place after the Antichrist establishes his dominions because this is how the spirit of Antichrist prepares the way for the man called the Antichrist to establish his authority and the rise of his kingdom. So the apostasy starts from where the Antichrist establishes his rule. Here it is written very clearly in the scriptures that he opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, declaring himself to be God. This is what we are seeing now. In the name of different powers and rights, the written word of God is rejected or manipulated to form their own convenient teachings. This is the work of the spirit of Antichrist. He will declare himself God. He will call himself Christ and take his seat in the temple of God. This is the word of God, the testimony of the Holy Spirit. Beloved, Jesus Christ uses the term, the ruler of this world, to describe the Antichrist, the descendant of Satan. The word of God bears witness to the fact that in the end times, the Antichrist will rule through the church which influences the whole world. So, what is the climax of the apostasy? the dawn of the rule of the Antichrist, his coronation, that is the final product of the apostasy. Again, this also is very clearly mentioned in Holy Mother's messages to Stefano Gobi. We have heard these words before. The Holy Mother has clearly proclaimed that the Catholic Church has turned to be the most fertile soil for the poisonous tree called Antichrist to grow. Thus, it can be clearly seen that the apostasy has already been fulfilled. Beloved, 
this renunciation of the truth has been officially declared and celebrated in the Second Vatican Synod and thereafter. If you examine the studies and the teachings which have been the existence and compare it to the ones that have come after the Second Vatican Synod, you will see very clear indications of the apostasy. When Pope John XXIII inaugurated the Second Vatican Synod, he said that the primary goal of the Synod is the modernization of the church, which means to renew the church and make it more harmonious with the modern world. For that, they brought in many philosophies and teachings which make the church compatible with the world. God has said very clearly in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, that you should not conform to this world. Rather, you should be transformed by the renewal of your minds so that you may discern the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. From the day the church decided to conform itself with the world, it lost the power to discern the will of God and know what is pleasing and right to Him. Thus, the teaching that we need cultural compatibility and integration is a product of the Second Vatican Council. This is totally contradictory to the Word of God. So, the Word of God has been adulterated and the basic principles have been discarded to be compatible with the ideologies of this world. Today, the church leaders have forsaken the true faith just to be called broad-minded, noble, and to gain the honor and respect of this world. This is proof that the apostasy has already taken place. They often say, that in the Second Vatican Council, the doorways of the church have been opened. That is true. All the doors and windows have been opened. What should have never entered has all entered now. God's true church is that which God separates from this world in order to make it obey the word of God. It should not conform to the ways of this world. Those who have accepted the word of God will be hated by the world as they do not belong to this world. Just like Jesus Christ was not of this world. His flock, that is the ones belonging to him, are also not of this world. The world cannot love those who are filled with the true word of God. So, if you conform yourself with the world, then the true word of God will not exist in you. Because those in whom the true word of God is present, they cannot make themselves compatible to the world. Jesus Christ has clearly taught us that if you love the world or the things in it, the Father's love will not exist in you. He taught us that if you seek friendship with the world, then you will make yourselves an enemy of God. Hence, when they made themselves friends with the world through this synod, what has happened? They led all God's people into the enemy fortress and made them enemies of God. Beloved, the Holy Mother said that the third secret of Fatima should be published in 1960 because the reason for it will be clearer then. On May 17, 1957, the preparations for the Second Vatican Council had begun. If the Church had taken the Holy Mother's warning seriously and published the third secret of Fatima back then, then this disaster would not have happened. God's children could have been aware and more cautious of this disaster called the apostasy. On February 8, 1960, the Vatican said in a news group published from Portugal that though the church accepts the visions of Fatima, 
but does not wish to take on the responsibility of guaranteeing the truthfulness of the words of three shepherd children. Just examine every word of this statement. Here you can see an indirect dismissal of God's message. Beloved, you should read this along with the inaugural speech of Pope John the 23rd in the Second Vatican Council. He said that we feel we must disagree with those prophets of gloom who are always forecasting disaster as though the end of the world were at hand. The Holy Mother had said in Fatima that this is the last century and had given many warnings pertaining to the end times in her messages. So the words of Pope John the 23rd in his inaugural speech are like a slap in the Holy Mother's face and a display a clear denial of her messages. Beloved, according to the Bible scholars today, the world is not going to come to an end. God does not take revenge. When each person dies, then it is their own end. We should work hard and preserve all these traditions. Heaven and earth will not pass away. These are the viewpoints of the Bible scholars today. They are great scholars after all. Therefore, what Jesus Christ prophesied 2000 years ago, has been fulfilled through these church authorities who have mocked the words of our Holy Mother in this manner. As we read in John chapter 10, verse 12 and 13, the hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. The Antichrist is the biggest wolf who came to destroy the sheep. When they saw him coming, the ones who were supposed to protect the sheep, the hired hand ran away. This is what the church leaders who disregarded the third secret of Fatima have done. Beloved, Peter is the hired hand. We read in John chapter 21, verse 15. This is a scenario wherein Jesus gives Peter the responsibility of protecting and leading his flock. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. What did Jesus say? Feed my lambs. So whose lambs are they? The lambs belong to Jesus Christ and not to Peter. So Peter is the hired hand who is tasked with the responsibility of taking care of Jesus Christ's lambs. How should he take care of them? In the way that the shepherd of the lambs prefers it. And what is the qualification for that? He should love the shepherd to whom the sheep belongs more than anybody else. In other words, he should love Jesus Christ more than anybody else in this world. This is a qualification that Peter had. And the shepherd who is leading the flock and is responsible for the lambs should also have the same qualification. And if he has that qualification, he will not run away when he sees the wolf coming. Thus, Simon Peter is the hired hand who is responsible for protecting and looking after Jesus Christ's flock till he comes back. So the prophecy that the hired hands will run away has been fulfilled. In La Salette, in France, 
Holy Mother has clearly taught that Rome will lose faith and become the throne of the Antichrist. The same has been told to Pope Leo XIII in the vision given by God that Satan will establish his throne in the same place that Peter has his throne. If you listen to all this and view it from a human perspective, you will feel that we are criticizing people. But these are warnings that God gave in advance. So God has given very clear warnings about this great disaster through Jesus Christ, through the Holy Mother, and through the Holy Spirit, which will happen to the church. So, if God's greatest wealth, that is faith, and the true word of God are lost, then that system will be destroyed. So the warning that the Holy Mother gave through the third secret of Fatima is pertaining to the downfall, the apostasy of the church. She gave this warning to prevent it from happening and so that the children of God would not perish. Jesus Christ had declared 2,000 years ago that the church will be led by the Antichrist. Those who have grown used to hearing certain other scriptures may not have paid attention to the following scripture. Let's read in John chapter 21 verse 18. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hand and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. It is written below in the footnotes that this scripture is about the type of death by which Peter would glorify God. Beloved, the secret of this scripture has been revealed by God through the gospel of the good news, which is to be preached in the end times through the prophet Isaiah, Joseph Punar. This scripture is not about Peter. It is about the church. Peter was not young when he became Jesus' disciple. He was old and had a family at that time. So where it is said, when Peter was young, it actually means when the church was young. When the church was young, because the church loved Christ more than anybody else, it went where Christ liked. That was also Peter's preference. But when he grew old, he stretched out his hands and someone else fastened a belt around him and took him where he did not wish to go. So, who is this someone else? We had previously seen in a prior episode, which is another spirit, which is another gospel. The another spirit that preaches another gospel. This another spirit refers to the spirit of the Antichrist. So Jesus Christ has clearly taught us that during the last days of this world, in the end times, at the coming of the Son of God, the church will be led by the Antichrist himself. So if you read all these prophecies together, you will get a clear idea of the secrets that the Holy Mother revealed at Fatima. Dear brothers and sisters, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. People usually dismiss all other scriptures by quoting this scripture, the very Jesus Christ who said this himself told Peter that when he grows old, someone else will fasten a belt around him and take him where he does not wish to go. So God has clearly written about all these things that will happen in different times. So why is all this disaster taking place? As we read in Wisdom chapter 7 verse 30, Against wisdom, evil does not prevail. 
For as long as the church leaders and the priests guarded wisdom, evil did not prevail against them. But today, wisdom has been rejected and everybody is under the slavery of worldly knowledge, philosophies and individual viewpoints and concepts. Wisdom has been forsaken and rejected. Hence, evil has prevailed. Therefore, beloved, when we realize what is the third secret of Fatima, we will get a clear understanding of this great disaster that is taking place in the church, which is also mentioned in the Word of God. So, what did the Holy Mother declare in the third secret of Fatima? The apostasy, which has already taken place within the church, its initiation at the very top hierarchy of the church, the Antichrist imminent reign, and thereby the downfall of the church. These are the core warnings of a message. So, what has occurred due to the covering up of the real third secret of Fatima? What is the outcome of altering it? God's people got trapped. They were unable to accept these messages as forewarning from God. They failed to exercise caution against the works of the Antichrist. They were unable to guard themselves from the renunciation of faith. They were incapable of preventing the apostasy. Therefore, beloved, what has happened? God's warnings were rejected. The Holy Mother is very pained at the fact that God's people have not accepted her chastisements and warnings. The Heavenly Father is also greatly grieved at this. Sister Lucy talks about this pain of the Holy Mother in an interview which she gave in 1957. As we read in Hosea chapter 4, verse 4 to 9. Yet let no one contend, and let none accuse, for with you is my contention, O priest. This is God's accusation against a system which denied the word of God. You shall stumble by day, the prophet also shall stumble with you by night. And I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. This is God's pain. My people are destroyed due to lack of wisdom. Because you have rejected wisdom. This is God's accusation. And it cannot be denied. I reject you from being a priest to me. People usually say that once you are anointed, your anointing can never be taken away. But this scripture also mentions a way you can lose your anointing. If you reject wisdom, you will lose your anointing. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, that is the first commandment. I also will forget your children. The first commandment is the commandment that is being disobeyed the most. The more they increased, the more they sinned against me. They changed their glory into shame. They feed on the sin of my people. They are greedy for their iniquity. And it shall be like people, like priests. I will punish them for their ways and repay them for their deeds. When will God take revenge? In the end times. It is exactly about this that the Holy Mother warned so that we do not perish in His wrath. What will happen to those who do not heed the words of our Holy Mother and her warnings? As we read in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 20 to 32. Every Christian should read and meditate on these scriptures very carefully. The Holy Mother's Spirit is saying this. Holy wisdom is calling out. 
Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused. Have stretched out my hand and no one heeded. God is also lamenting in the same words in the book of Zechariah. And because you have ignored my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamities. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish comes upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. So, all those who have dismissed the messages of the Holy Mother and have not paid any attention to her instructions in times of suffering and tribulations that have been prophesied, they will search for her, but will not find her. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. That is what we have seen before. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple and the complacency of fools destroys them. Therefore, beloved, this scripture teaches us very clearly about what will happen to those who ignore the words of the Holy Mother and reject her warnings. It also tells us how the Holy Mother will respond to them. Thus, the third secret of Fatima is mentioned in the Bible. It is written very clearly in the Gospels, the letters and in the book of Revelation as well. It is the Holy Mother's warning about the greatest disaster that can befall the people of God. What the Holy Mother has said is all written in the Word of God. So, will it not happen? It will happen. Doesn't it have to take place? Yes, it has to. Then, for whom does the Holy Mother give these warnings so that they might escape? For the people who are destined for salvation. It is for those who should be saved when the Son of God comes again. And when Emperor Emmanuel is revealed, the Holy Mother has given this warning in order to escape from this evil from the apostasy and to escape the imminent rule of the Antichrist. Dearly beloved, I'm once again asking you to ponder over all the things that we have examined today from God's perspective. We should hear it as people who are faithful to their God. We should hear it as people who know and believe the word of God. Then, we will be able to understand and receive it. I'm not restricting your freedom because God will never restrict anyone's freedom. So the children of God also won't be able to do that. Today Zion is proclaiming this message for the children of the Holy Mother, for those who love her and pay attention to her warnings to flee from this renunciation of faith and from the Antichrist's imminent rule and reach the Son of God.
So I pray that the spirit of holy wisdom may give the children of the Holy Mother the courage and strength to discern the truth, to accept the truth and to uphold the truth. All glory be to the most holy name of the Almighty God. All honor be to God's holy wisdom who strives to warn us and bring us to God. Amen.